Have you ever wondered how tsunamis form? Tsunamis, those massive ocean waves that cause extensive destruction when they hit the coast, are all set into motion by a significant event on the seafloor. Picture a powerful earthquake, a volcanic eruption, or an underwater landslide. These are the sorts of events that can serve as the trigger for a tsunami. The impact of these seismic or geological happenings disturbs the water mass beneath them. Imagine a colossal invisible hand shoving the water column from below, forcing it upward or downward. This violent disruption of the water column is the first step in the formation of a tsunami. So while we often think of tsunamis as simply large waves, their creation is a complex process that begins far beneath the ocean's surface. It's a process that requires an event of considerable magnitude to set it in motion. So it all starts with a significant disturbance on the seafloor. Now that there's been a disturbance, what happens next? The triggering event, whether it's an earthquake, volcanic eruption, or underwater landslide, shakes the seafloor. This movement is transferred to the water column above, causing it to shift and displace. Imagine a child splashing in a bathtub. The larger and more sudden the movement, the bigger the splash. In the ocean, this splash takes the form of a wave. But this isn't an ordinary wave. This is a wave born out of immense force, a direct result of the underwater disturbance. The displaced water mass rises or falls abruptly, creating a substantial wave. In the open ocean, this wave may seem unremarkable, with a long period and low height. But don't be fooled, this is just the beginning of its journey. The wave at this point is born, but it's not a tsunami just yet. As it travels closer to the coast, this seemingly harmless wave will transform into a force of nature. A tsunami. So how does this wave become a tsunami, you might ask? Well, it all starts with the rapid rise or fall of the water. This activity creates a substantial wave. Now, in the vast expanse of the open ocean, this might not look like much. This is because the tsunami at this stage has a very long period and low height. It's almost like a gentle giant moving stealthily beneath the ocean surface. However, as this wave starts to approach the coast, things begin to change. The wavelength, the distance between two successive crests or troughs, starts to shorten. And as the wavelength gets shorter, the height of the wave begins to increase. This is where the transformation happens. The once gentle giant now becomes a towering wall of water gaining momentum and power with every inch it gets closer to the shore. And as it nears land our wave transforms into a tsunami. What happens when the tsunami reaches the coast? Imagine a wall of water, a monstrous wave, seemingly appearing out of nowhere, racing towards the shore. As the tsunami approaches the coastline, the shallow water underneath slows the wave's speed, but the back of the wave, still in deeper water, catches up, causing the wave to rise dramatically in height. The surge of energy that has traveled across the ocean now focuses on a smaller area, amplifying the wave's power. This towering wall of water, a tsunami, can reach up to 100 feet in height, and its immense force can cause substantial damage upon impact. Buildings, trees, cars, nothing stands a chance against this unstoppable force of nature. The wave doesn't stop at the beach but continues inland, swallowing everything in its path, leaving destruction in its wake. And that's how a peaceful ocean can turn into a destructive force in just a few hours. Now that we know how tsunamis form, let's look at some historical examples. Often, the scale of a tsunami's impact is best understood through real-world instances. The Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004, triggered by a massive earthquake off Sumatra's west coast, resulted in the loss of over 230,000 lives across 14 countries. Seven years later in 2011, Japan suffered a substantial tsunami following the Great East Japan earthquake, taking the lives of around 16,000 people. Turning the clock back to 1755, an earthquake and subsequent tsunamis brought significant devastation to Lisbon, Portugal, claiming over 60,000 lives. In 1960, the Great Chilean earthquake initiated a tsunami causing thousands of deaths in Chile and across the Pacific Ocean. And finally in 2006, a tsunami triggered by an earthquake off Java, Indonesia resulted in more than 600 fatalities. These historical events serve as a stark reminder of the power and potential destructiveness of tsunamis.